Welcome back, it's For All Fun Bros, back again with another video. And before I start off, I just wanted to say, if you guys didn't notice, I'm actually squatting over here. And I also want to say thank you for subscribing, staying tuned with this new XJ build, pretty much showing support and love, because it does help out the YouTube algorithms. I do appreciate it, and I'm very happy, as you can see. So with that pretty much out of the way, I'm hoping to get my plates in this video, we'll see what happens. Um, because it could go one way you get your plates or the other way you don't get your plates so we'll see what happens so stay tuned but before we take off just wanted to pop the hood real quick and clean the engine bay make it a little more presentable and I'll show you some before and after pictures that way the smog check inspector when he's popping the hood and looking at the engine bay and he sees it's nice and presentable same with the VIN verification person they pop the hood looking for the VIN numbers and stickers they don't really second guess any of the work that I did not like you have to though Alright you guys, there you go, I've seen the before and after of the engine bay, looks 100 times better and just a little peace of mind for me, knowing that the engine is clean and if somebody's popping the hood, they're not going to worry about maybe anything being fixed weird, they're going to just see a nice clean engine bay. But we do have a little issue and let me show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so here's this beautiful 2.5 liter engine, it's a marvelous design. And um, when I did get this car, actually noticed that this switch right here for the power steering pressure switch I noticed it was you know seeping and by the time I was driving pretty much you know put maybe 300 miles on it it got worse and worse to the point where my fluid is pretty much low on this power steering reservoir and it started making a little noise when I'm turning the steering wheel and yeah I did see that it was dripping a lot more so time to replace it I do have the new one so let's go do that real quick Alright, so there we are. Pretty much not a hard job to do at all. So the power steering pressure switch has been replaced. Anybody could do this. And I guess let me show you the old one. So here it is. So it didn't start leaking from anywhere here. Not the O-ring, not the sides of the connector. But if you take off the connector and start peeking inside, it's hard to tell. But the right side pin started gushing out power steering fluid. So that's what usually happens in these style switches, whether it's an engine oil pressure switch or in my case, power steering pressure switch, they start gushing from the inside of the connector. So make sure you catch this early because if you don't, the fluid, whether it's engine or power steering fluid, um, will start making its way into the connector, down into the wires and possibly can ruin your harness. So the faster you catch it, the faster you place the switch, the better it is for you. So just a little tip, I guess. So we're moving along into the interior of this Jeep and I guess let's go ahead and try to tackle that airbag light. As you guys been hearing, my airbag light doesn't come on when my ignition is on and I don't have any code. So I did replace both of the front airbags and I'm thinking it's the bulb, but I guess let's go ahead and find out what it actually is. All right, so got the cluster off, here it is. Real quickly, let me just kind of try to show it to you. Here's that airbag light, the indent. So it's supposed to be red, I believe. And um, if we go to the opposite side, check this out. Ta-da! The BL18 right here for the airbag light is actually straight up missing. So the socket is missing. So I can't just put a bulb in here. It's Nothing's going to work. And as you can see, the spare is actually missing as well. And I got one of these that's missing. Other than that, everything is good. So I don't know about these three. If they're supposed to be there, maybe this one isn't. What is this one? Let's see. So I got part-time, full-time. I guess that's for the 4x4 system. Honestly, don't even know if the full time is supposed to be there. Comment down in the section below. Let me know if it's supposed to be there. If it is, I'm going to have to get at least three of them. But in the meantime, I think I'll get this low washer fluid socket off and swap it into the airbag light because it's a little more important. Honestly, washer fluid is washer fluid. 
I could just do it the old school way, fill it up. If it's empty, fill it up again. So let's do that, swap everything, clean it up, and put it back together. So here's this bulb and the socket, how it looks. To me, it looks like the bulb is good, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick it into the airbag hole, and hopefully that airbag light is going to work. So let's go ahead and have some fun. All right, so here we are. The cluster is actually installed, and before I slap on the rest of the plastics, let's go ahead, turn the ignition on, and see if that light for the airbag is going to turn on. So here we go. Okay, so the light is turning on. That's good. Now let's start it and see if it turns off. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, but the light, as you've seen, turned off and turned back on. So explains maybe why <laughs> the bulb in the first place, the last owner, whoever had it, got that bulb out of there with a the socket. Um, I don't know. Last time I scanned the airbag system, there was no faults. So I'm going to scan it again just to double check. And if we don't have any faults, then might have an issue with the cluster or something else that's causing this light to turn on. So I guess we got to dive a little bit deeper. And um, yeah, kind of sucks, but oh well. All right, y'all. So back with the XJ. It's been some time, but we did get those plates. So that's good um, without any CHP inspection. And um, yeah, we got smog done. Everything is done. We got the plates and insurance. We're all good to go. So I'm moving along to the next thing, and if you guys remember from the last episodes, pretty much what happened was I noticed my coolant lines to the heater core were snapped off. So my only guess was probably they were leaking with the past owner, so let me show you real quick what's going on again. Alright, so here we are looking into the engine compartment, if you guys didn't notice, and boom. Coolant lines into the heater core were snapped off when I just got it. Little fitting over here. So pretty much the coolant is just routed to the engine, nothing going into the heater core. So the heater ain't going to be working. And most likely, 99% of the time, heater core is leaking. That's why they do this. So somebody didn't want to pay the hefty bill. And for me, I get to do some fun work placing this heater core that's behind the dash. Real quick, let me just do an overview. So I stopped with the time lapse, and that's pretty much all you got to remove with this dash to swing it out. But I guess a little overview, maybe what I just did. Um, I disconnected this harness, but to get this dash, you don't really have to disconnect that. Just this harness right over here, right there. That's part of the dash, and then this antenna, it's part of the dash as well, right over here. Also, there's this metal bracket on the bottom. It's a lot easier if you take it out goes to the bottom of the dashboard 
right over here. And since I got this manual transmission, didn't even have to remove the center console, just kind of popped off the boot and um, moved it back a little bit. So that was easy. Let's go to the driver's side. Down here, all I did was drop the steering column and um, disconnected this airbag harness. But as you can see, if I connect it, there's still plenty of wiggle room. So I was just being safe, I guess. And let's go to the firewall. So I do have the four banger 2.5 cylinder. I got more room down here by the firewall. And I guess there's three nuts. This top one, super easy to get to. This bottom one, I heard if you guys got that 4.0, it's a lot harder to get for me, pretty easy. And this one right here on the passenger side, I already removed it, so I got one nut to remove. And then I'll be kind of wiggling this box out. And I guess I'll see you guys soon after I get this sucker out. All right, so a quick update for you guys. Here's the box out of the car. Originally, I thought I would need to remove only this nut and then these two nuts by the engine, but I had two more right over here plus this little evap line and plus this little drain tube right over here this one wouldn't hold the whole box i mean if you forgot to remove it you'd probably still rip the box out but then this would come off and you wouldn't notice so make sure you don't forget about this drain little tube and let me i guess show you the inside of the car so that's where it would sit originally by the firewall and would you look at that pretty much bare as you could see so one thing I did notice while driving this Jeep, the blower motor, it would make noise like in the higher speeds. So what I'm gonna do is probably pop this off, see if there's any leaves, debris, or maybe something rubbing. So I guess let's go ahead and find out if I see anything. All right, so I got my one, two, and three screws off. Let's pop this motor off. Oh yeah, definitely, check this out. This was probably my noise that I was hearing, and what I'm gonna do is clean all this out. Put it back on and that should solve my issue with the noise there you go so so what happened was long story short um the audio went bad on the footage that i used so what happened was i was removing the box from the car getting the evaporator core off the heater core kind of looking at all the debris and kind of recording as i went decided to hey let me just check had this gut feeling let me just check this last you know couple scenes and see how it turned out. Wouldn't you know, the audio was bad and pretty much I couldn't really use it. So at that point, my box was still taken apart. Some things were still off. So I decided, hey, let me do a quick overview, tell you guys real quick what happened, what problems I ran into. And that was that. Went home, it was late at night, decided to check that video and wouldn't you know, the audio was still bad. So now I'm at this point end stage. I don't even know if anybody really needs this footage, but I guess, Maybe there's that one person that was like, dang it, I wish I could have seen the inside of the box or something. So I'm going to do a little voiceover, I guess, for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy of the last scene that was the take two. So I hope that kind of clarifies it and maybe it helps that one person out. So enjoy. All right. So a little bit of voiceover action for you guys. Hope you guys don't get pissed off of this voice, but just showing the little fins over here. If you have a little leaf stuck inside, get it out. That will solve your issues with noises. Next thing, moving along, the resistor was dirty. Peeked inside, found the evaporator core dirty. These are all the debris. And pretty much just saying that I'm going to reuse this evap core and just clean it out. If I have issues later, YOLO. Going to live without AC for a little bit, but can't live without the heater. So here's the old heater. Was definitely leaking. Seen better days. And yeah, that's the new one installed and pretty much I'm going to just take it out and show you a little plastic piece right over here. So I got a little bit stuck on it and just kind of showing you guys how it kind of goes back on if anybody wants to know. But nothing to it, just cleaned out the box, set this evaporator core back inside, made sure this mounting point was correctly mounted and in its position and that's that. Alright, so now that the voiceover is finally out of the way, let me show you how the Jeep is sitting right now. So before I start, just wanted to state that it's super windy outside. And if there is any wind noise, my bad. But here's the dashboard. It's sitting in its position, but not secured yet. Still need the bolts and nuts up top and on the sides or wherever it was. I can't remember. I think it was the sides. Um, but yeah, this is what I did off camera. Got the steering wheel. This um, column is secured. 
plug this harness up on the bottom for airbags and I think that was kind of it on that side moving to the passenger side here's the dashboard still got to get this controller there's two plugs with four screws that hold it nothing crazy there's this uh, metal bracket that holds the dashboard right here on the bottom get the center console secured pushed forward down over here we got the vacuum lines that I connected green connect over here connected routed this guy properly so it's not pinched and um, the antenna right over here so I think that was pretty much it got all the parts in the back for this dashboard to complete it I guess I'll do this off camera because literally it's just opposite of removal no point of recording it twice plus we got all this wind noise so I'll see you guys shortly so here we are inside of this XJ. The car is running right now. No check engine lights, no airbag lights. Um, this works. Wiper is working fine. Rear defroster is working. Um, the main concern was the noise with the blower motor. So let's find out. That's on three, four. Yeah, smooth operator and noise is gone now. Um, I guess, let me see. If we switch it from hot to cold, if there's any noises. Nope. And I hope it's working. I don't really hear much, but I think it's doing its thing. Wind chilled right here. My AC is not charged, so it's not going to be turning on. So yeah, there you go. Recirculation seems to be working, sucking harder. So yeah, there you go. All right, so I don't know what's going on with this mic. I was just talking pretty much useless talk for like 20 minutes trying to record stuff, but whatever. I'm going to scratch everything out. We're going to end this video as is. Um, pretty much I wanted to just say I'm at the point where I'm pretty much squaring away with all these little things with this XJ. And I'm at the point where I want to lift this Jeep. So I do want to hear your opinions. Um, I don't want to drive this Jeep in a stock form. Um, if I would have to, I'd probably tint the windows or something so I wouldn't be seen. But I'm pretty much trying to get this Jeep looking a little more beefy. So um, I do want to hear your opinions. I kind of have something in mind what I want to be doing with this Jeep. But your opinions would not hurt at all. So drop them in the comment section below. Like what lift kit should I be going? Like how high should I lift it? Maybe tire sizes, um, shock, suspension, like leaf springs, springs, bushings. I don't know. You just anything you guys deal with and um know is better or something just let me know and i'll greatly appreciate it so i guess if you guys made it this far congratulations give yourself a nice pat on the back but i want to say if you didn't subscribe what are you doing subscribe to the channel help your boy out help help out the algorithm um that's pretty much it so the next video is going to be either this headliner um we got enough content to just make a whole video solely on that or possibly a lift kit i don't know stay tuned and find out for a fun